Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to the new video on the Casual Racing Gamer. Today, I am going to show you how to make your Quest 3 look amazing for iRacing, other sim racing, PC VR. But obviously, I'm, you know, I use it for sim racing, so that is where my focus and concentration is on. And the Quest 3 can look literally insane. Insane. So what we're going to do, it's very simple, but you do need a powerful PC to power this up the way it needs to be powered, right? So if you have some lower end hardware, you might struggle to push this headset to its full capabilities. But first thing, um, and people are gonna disagree with me on this, but this is what I like to do. First thing I do is I run my headset in 72 Hertz. I do not find any advantage personally if I go to 80 or 90, I'd rather a nice, sharp, crisp picture over higher frames. 72 is super smooth to me, so I have no issue with 72. You guys can use any refresh rate you want. You just might have to lower your resolution and the settings I'm gonna show you that, that are going to really boost up the quality of this headset. Um, I do run it at a 1.3x, so I push it up to the highest resolution. So that is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the most the, the, the most clearest clearest um, picture I can possibly get out of this headset. Then what we want to do is you want to go to your um, program files, Oculus support, Oculus diagnostics, and you want to go to the Oculus debug tool. And what we're going to do here is we are going to disable encode dynamic bitrate. Now here's the thing that's going to really push this headset to the limit. Um, this does work on the Quest 2, but I'll tell you the differences that I see by using a Quest 3 and why you might want to get a Quest 3 over a Quest 2. But if you change this to, you're only going to be able to type up to 500 here, right? But we can actually go up to about 940. And the only way you can do that if you're going to go over 500 is you have to actually paste this number. You have to actually um, type this number in something else. So in like Word or somewhere, type in 700, 750, 800, up to, nine, up to 940. And you have to copy and then paste the number in here. You cannot type anything above 500, but we can really push the bit right here. So I'm going to go with a 700. I'm using an RTX 3080 and I'm running an i7, um, an i7 Intel CPU. So I'm pushing 700. We can push more, um, but you have to play with it depending on your hardware. And you, you know, I, I don't want to sacrifice drop, drop frames for better quality. I want to run smooth at where I'm setting it. So at 700, I found it to look really, really good. And the other thing I'm going to do here is I am going to do link sharpening and I'm going to do quality. Um, there is a normal setting that is obviously disabled. You do not want to disable. This is a big deal. And I'm going to use quality. So with those settings, um, we are going to go into iRacing and I'm going to tell you exactly what I see and why it is. It, it, it looks it looks insane. It literally looks insane. Let's hop into iRacing and let's let's discuss a little further about the actual headset itself and um why why I'm giving it a recommendation. All right, guys. So first, I'm going to share my settings that I use in iRacing, and you can see, you know, I pump up the things that I find that are important to me, and then other settings that you know, like the crowds and stuff like that. I don't really need high detail there. So you know, we're going to use our power where we actually want it, stuff that affects our race, and we'll just lower those settings where where we don't really want to use our power that doesn't affect our race. I want the I want the best picture you know, in my car, on the track, things that are in my site that are going to be affecting my race and really make it um, exciting for me. So once we hop into the car, immediately, once we look out on the track, the road, it's crispy clear. Crispy clear. Do you, I don't even know if that's like a, a word. Crispy clear. But the clarity on it, on the road, the clarity in the whole headset when you pump up the bit rate to 700 is, it, it's insane. It, it literally... I can't explain how good this actually looks. As we're driving, if we look around with just our eyes, um, everything looks clear because we're getting these pancake lenses. So it, it, it's clear all around when we look around. If I look um, to, to all the way out into the distance, everything is, is really clear. Everything is sharp. If we look to the left, we can see everything on our left, like peripheral, peripheral, I can never say that word, peripheral vision. Um, it's clear. There's no blurriness. If we put the Quest 2 on, yes, we can pump up the settings on a Quest 2, but we're not going to get the clarity like we get in a Quest 3 all around our, our our lenses. So if we look to the far right, to the far left, um, it's not going to be sharp. We're not going to get that clarity that we're getting in a Quest 3. Where there's so much that just looks so good and so detailed. Um, that's going to be the biggest difference. Now, if you have a Quest 2, is it, is it worth is it worth the upgrade to the Quest 3? Um, I think you can still get a great picture out of the Quest 2. So so I, I can't say um, the Quest 2. I enjoy the Quest 2. So it's hard for me to tell you that 
without a doubt, go to a Quest 3. And I'll tell you why you might want to go to Quest 3, though. Um, there, there's other factors to take into consideration. But you can get a great picture by pumping up the bitrate on a Quest 2. Now, we are getting the pancake lenses, like I said, with the Quest 3. So you get to see everything well, detailed. There's, there's no little sweet spot. The Quest 2 has a pretty decent sweet spot, but it's still not the full use of the whole lens like we're getting with pancake lenses. Um, I, I, I can't tell you how good this actually looks. Like the, the clarity, the road, we're getting rid of so much compression when we pump up that bit rate that the road even looks good. It looks sharp. The Quest 2, yes, it's, it's, it's also field of view, right? The Quest 2 doesn't have as, as large field of view. We're getting a bigger field of view with the Quest 3. Is it a game changer for me? No, because I'm used to using PSVR 2, and I think PSVR 2 and Quest 2 might be more similar in, in, um, with field of view. So I'm kind of used to this field of view. Now, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. It's not like we're not wearing a headset. We're still going to see borders around our eyes. It's just not as, 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 as maybe not as bad as the Quest 2. I never found the Quest 2 field of view to actually be bad. But we are supposed to be getting a, a wider field of view in the Quest 3. So that'll, you know, that that's one thing that might... Uh, is it a game changer, the field of view? No, because we still feel like we're wearing a headset. If we felt like we weren't in a headset and we don't see those borders, that, that's a game changer to me. But we are getting a wider field of view. So that's a good thing. Yes, the Quest 3 headset is smaller, but it weighs the same amount as the Quest 2. Is it the most comfortable headset? Um, I'm using the standard strap. It's not the most comfortable headset. After a while, it could get uncomfortable. It's still heavy. Um, because it's not as, as it's skinnier in the front, it's not as much weight, but it, it it's going to be definitely per, personal preference when it comes to comfort. Just looking around here, like just when you look around, taking in the scenes and the sights, it looks so good. Like it looks so good. Now, where does the Quest really stand out? It stands out if you're going to actually use it for other things as well. I don't use my VR headsets for anything outside of sim racing, but the Quest 3, I've been playing around with mixed reality, and I would play to like a ping pong game that that you could, that it has mixed reality. You set up the table like in your room so you can see everything around you, but you have a ping pong table there. It literally is insane. It, that's next level VR to me, and I think if you're going to, you can really enjoy things outside of sim racing with the Quest 3, and I think mixed reality is going to is gonna definitely be a game changer when it comes to VR in the future of VR, because a big thing for me with being in VR is, is you're removed from the outside world, but here you can still hang out with your family and play ping pong and things like that. So that to me is a big change, um, game changer for, for VR. But I totally recommend the Quest 3 for sim racing, for iRacing, for other you know sim racing games. If you have a powerful PC, like I said, it does require you to have, a, have something decent um, you know, I'm running an RTX 3080, so I have a powerful, a decent, powerful GPU. But if you don't have something as powerful, you might want to go like a standalone headset that uses a display port um, because they don't require as much power. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this helped you out. Thumb up the video, subscribe, and um, we'll catch you on the next one. We out of here. Peace.